This ball and stick model shows the arrangement of atoms in a silicon crystal. Each atom is connected to four others in a tetrahedral pattern. A space filling model at the same scale uses larger spheres for the atoms like this. Each atom by itself has four electrons in its outer shell. In a crystal, the outer shell electrons are shared between adjacent atoms. Each atom is connected to two atoms in front and two behind. Each connected atom is, in turn, connected to three more atoms in a repeating pattern. Those other atoms are not shown, but here are the shared electrons. Including the shared electrons, each atom's outer shell is filled with eight electrons, like the outer shell of a noble gas a stable configuration. Nevertheless, at room temperature, an electron occasionally has enough thermal energy to escape and then move freely throughout the crystal. This is called a mobile electron or conduction electron because it can carry an electric current. The empty space left behind is a hole which causes the two adjacent atoms to have a net positive charge. This positive charge attracts nearby electrons, which can easily move within an atom's shell. In this way, a hole can move from atom to atom. It's useful to think of a hole as a mobile, positively charged particle. Going back to when the hole was first created, it moves like this. The hole has moved on to the next atom not shown in the picture. Moving holes like this can carry an electric current. Zooming out, we can see the creation of an electron and a hole by thermal energy. In the presence of an electric field, holes are attracted to the cathode and electrons to the anode. Without an electric field, the particles are free to move randomly. If they happen to meet, the electron falls into the hole and both mobile particles cease to exist. This is called recombination. Mobile electrons and holes are constantly created by thermal energy and destroyed by recombination. Now let's look at what happens when a different type of atom replaces a silicon atom. Arsenic has not four, but five electrons in its outer shell. When put in a silicon crystal, the atom readily releases a mobile electron and acquires a positive charge. An arsenic atom in silicon is like a sodium atom, which has a single electron in its outermost shell. It readily gives up this electron, leaving behind a new stable outer shell of eight electrons, and the atom acquires a positive charge. Arsenic is called a donor because it donates a mobile electron to the silicon crystal. Silicon with a little bit of arsenic mixed in is called N-type silicon because it contains negatively charged mobile particles that can carry an electric current. The positively charged arsenic atoms cannot move or carry a current. Now let's look at what happens when a boron atom replaces a silicon atom. Boron has not four, but three electrons in its outer shell. When put in a silicon crystal, the atom readily accepts an electron and acquires a negative charge. This also creates a hole which can move from atom to atom as we saw before. A boron atom in silicon is like a chlorine atom, which has seven electrons in its outermost shell. It readily pulls in an electron making a stable outer shell of eight electrons, and the atom acquires a negative charge. Boron is called an acceptor because it accepts an electron from an adjacent silicon atom, producing a mobile hole. Silicon with a little bit of boron mixed in is called p-type silicon because it contains positively charged mobile particles that can carry an electric current. The negatively charged boron atoms cannot move or carry current. Now for some terminology. Silicon can be intrinsic or extrinsic, 
and extrinsic can be n-type or p-type. Intrinsic means pure silicon, which has an equal number of mobile electrons and holes. Extrinsic n-type silicon has negative mobile charges, and extrinsic p-type silicon has positive mobile charges. The mobile charges are balanced by immobile atomic ions having the opposite charge. A material added to silicon is called a dopant, which can be a donor or acceptor. In the periodic table, potential donors like arsenic are in the column just to the right of silicon, and potential acceptors like boron are in the column just to the left. Now let's look at silicon properties. A one centimeter cube of pure intrinsic silicon contains five times 10 to the 22 atoms. At room temperature, about one in a trillion atoms are ionized, resulting in 10 to the 10 mobile electrons and 10 to the 10 holes. Both kinds of particles can carry an electric current. The resistance between two opposite faces of the cube is 5,000 ohms. This last number is the band gap, the energy required to pull one electron from an atom to make a mobile charge. Silicon doped with boron to 10 to the 14 atoms per cubic centimeter results in 10 to the 14 holes. This is thousands of times more charge carriers than pure silicon, resulting in a significantly lower resistance, 130 ohms. Silicon doped with arsenic to 10 to the 14 atoms results in 10 to the 14 mobile electrons. The resistance is somewhat lower than the boron doped example, even though the number of charge carriers is the same, because electrons move more easily through silicon than holes. At 10 to the 16 dopant atoms per cubic centimeter, the resistance is around 1 ohm. This is still less than one dopant atom per million silicon atoms. When the dopant concentration exceeds 10 to the 19, which is about one per thousand silicon atoms, the material conducts so well it behaves like a metal and the semiconductor is said to be degenerate. In integrated circuits, strongly doped degenerate silicon is used to make MOS gates and short electrical connections. The table shows the concentrations of the majority charge carriers, the ones created by dopant atoms. Minority charge carriers, having the opposite charge, are still created by thermal energy and are important in diodes and other devices. Their numbers are reduced by recombination with majority carriers. For example, a boron concentration of 10 to the 14 creates 10 to the 14 holes and reduces the mobile electrons to 10 to the 6th. In general, the product of the electron and hole concentrations is 10 to the 20. This is the law of mass action, the same as in pH chemistry.